How's it going, everybody? Brian Alvarez here on Figure 4 Daily. It is Thursday, April 1st, 2010, here at figure4online.com slash wrestlingobserver.com. Joined today by one half of the Briscoe Brothers tag team, Jay Briscoe, is here on the line. And Jay, how you doing? All right. How about yourself? Not too bad. I was down in Phoenix this weekend, actually, and saw both ROH shows. And the Friday night match, the uh, the tag match you guys had in the main event, I thought was... I guess aside from Undertaker and Shawn Michaels, I think that was the best match of the weekend. And uh, what were your thoughts on it? I appreciate that. You know, I mean, it's always it's always a good match when we're in there with the Wolves. I mean, Davey and Eddie, they they two good wrestlers. And I think our styles match up pretty good. So, um, yeah, I, I was happy with it. You know, I thought the crowd was happy. So, you know, good match. And, and nobody uh, got hurt too bad, so you know that's always a good thing. That's always a, that's always a positive there. And then Saturday night, you guys had the match with Generico, and uh, I'm sorry, actually that was the uh, the American Wolves. Uh, Saturday night, it was uh, what was it? Saturday night, I didn't have my notes. Uh, here it was the uh, eight man. That's right, it was the eight man, <laughs> the eight man tag. Yeah. And uh, how was that? Well, it's always fun when you get a team with Necro Butcher. That's true. So, uh, you know, it's fun. I mean, just eight guys out there, nothing too serious, you know, just uh, all having a good time and, uh, you know, ended up picking up the W, so that's always a good thing. You know, fun little match. Now, now, Chris Hero was scheduled to be in that match, and they pulled him because he hurt his back on Friday night. And I actually saw Man, I think, him. I think it was just scared if you ask me. <laughs> well, we'll know this. We'll know this weekend. If he doesn't, if he doesn't show up this weekend, he's scared. But uh, right. it is it is the Big Bang this coming. Uh, it's April third in Charlotte, and you guys are facing the Kings of Wrestling for the tag team titles. And uh, thoughts on on Hero and Claudio? Uh, well, you know, I mean, they, I mean, we beat them. You know, several times before, but now I guess they kind of on a roll right now. And uh, but when you look at who they've been wrestling, they've been wrestling like guys from the ROH school, like the Bravado Brothers. And you know, at, at the final battle, they get to wrestle the Bravado Brothers and go out there and show off against them. Well, I mean, anybody can look good against the Bravados, but there's a big difference in the Bravado Brothers and the Briscoe Brothers, if you know what I mean. Oh, yeah. I mean, we come in, we bring in our eight games. Live pay per view. I mean, Charlotte, North Carolina. Hopefully, we got a big crowd there. Hopefully, you know, everybody turns in on a uh, tunes in on pay per view, and and it's going to be a good show. Now, you've been wrestling since you were very young, and in fact, there was a lot of uh, you know it was kind of tough early on because there were there were certain states you wanted to wrestle in where you had to be eighteen, and of course, you weren't eighteen at the time, and. Uh, you know, there are rumors about working under masks and that sort of thing, but uh, we can't confirm or deny any of that. But, yeah. I mean, you I guess you started training at, like, uh, what was it, 15, 16 years old? Yeah, I had just turned um, I had just turned 15, and my brother had just turned 14. And, uh, yeah, up in Wilmington, Delaware, under ECWA school. And, uh, yeah, like... We couldn't find, we, we applied at a bunch of wrestling schools, but everywhere you had to be 18. Then we found that one in Delaware, which ended up being like a two-hour drive for us, like uh, like two, three times a week. We had like a two-hour drive there, two-hour drive back. You know, that got kind of tough, like going to school, playing football, you know, doing all that at the same time. But, you know, thank God, you know, my parents helped out and everything, so... You know, we got her done. Yeah, talk a little bit about how your your mom was kind of influential in, in really helping you guys get going. Oh, yeah, well, both of them. I mean, they both gave us rides, you know, took turns giving us rides to uh, to training and to the shows and stuff, you know, because, I mean, when we first started, we didn't even have license, you know. We couldn't drive, so. And now they still, I mean, still to this day, they support us, you know, still go to the shows and, like, the, you know, the Philly shows, whatever's close, whatever they can make and, yeah, they, I mean, they've been real supportive the whole way. Now, when you were a, a little kid, was it WWF wrestling on uh, on the TV that kind of got you interested in, in yeah. wanting to do this? Well, I mean, when we were real little, you know, I mean, five, six, seven years old, it, it was Ultimate Warrior and Hulk Hogan. Sure. And then, I mean, as we kind of got, you know, like middle school, you know, 12, 13, we, we really got into ECW, like, Back when they were, um, like, in the arena, like, Sabu, RVD, uh, Dudley Boys, like, New Jack, like, those guys. 
I mean, before they were long before they were on uh, um, TN or uh, whatever that damn channel was. TNN. But back, like way back in the day, like we used to go up to the arena. Like we tried to go like as much as we could, you know. And we were, I remember we were like. 12 and 13 sitting in the arena crowd and I mean back then the people were crazy you know everybody drunk you know doing drugs around us and we were just like man this is pretty crazy right here this, so this that is kinda, a life that kind of sucked us in right there sure and so I guess it was just a few years later you were you were there in the school and I mean what yeah. what tag teams I mean obviously you guys were, were brothers and I'm sure that since you were just starting out, you were thinking, man, we're going to do some awesome tag team stuff here. And what tag teams were, were you really influenced by? Um, well, you know, as far as tag teams, I mean, like I, we were more and more into old school tag teams like the, you know, Rock and Roll Express, when, like uh, Michaels and Janetti, guys like that. Um, Anderson's, you know, the Steiner brothers. We were into uh, Legion of Doom. Then uh, when ECW came around, I got, like, really into the Dudley Boys, you know, like, just their characters and everything. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it's just pretty much, yeah, pretty much the old school guys that were the main ones. Like, we just used to get a lot of tapes, used to go to the to the uh, ECW shows. And I remember RF Video had his little stand set up, and we would go get the best of the uh, Midnight Express, you know, just because they were, the, like, one of the best tag teams, and we would watch that tape, you know, Hours, you know, hours at a time. So now you you guys have have been a staple of Ring of Honor forever. I mean, I think you are you the only guys left that were there on that first show. Um, I believe so. Let's see here. I think Paul Turner, the ref, was there. Sure. And I think I think Ross, the merchandise guy, was there. <laughs> <laughs> so these are the these are the hardcores here. That's right. And uh, well, uh, Prince Nana was on the first show too. Oh, that's yeah. Actually, Prince Nana was in the the Eight Man this this uh, this weekend. That was something else. Yeah. Uh huh. Now he yep. uh, he, he's obviously a, a, an interesting character, and um, you know, are there are there certain guys in in the ROH locker room that I mean, you know, you could listen to you doing the show right now, and you watch one of your your interviews on the show, and it's like these are the same guys. You know what I mean? It's just like <laughs> you guys are out there doing your promos, and that's the Briscoes. Is there anybody uh, that, that you watch in ROH and their character is like, I guess Necro Butcher would be a, a great example. Their character is just so different from, from how they are in, in real life. Well, man, Necro is just so off the wall, you know what I mean? He, I mean, that's pretty much what you see out there. Like, I wouldn't be surprised to, like, walk into, um, like, a bar after the show, a little after party or something, and Necro's in the corner banging himself in the head with a chair or something. Sure. You know, that, that's Necro. That's how he is, man, but... I mean, it's pretty much, you know, everybody is who they are, you know. I mean, I'm trying to think here. I mean, of course, Nana, you know. Yeah. He got his little character going on. and You know, but for the most part, everybody, nobody's too too crazy with the, with the uh, gimmicks and characters, I don't think. Is that kind of one of the strengths of ROH in the sense that they're, they're not creating a bunch of goofy characters for you? They're not scripting out yeah. interviews for you? They just let you go out there and, and be who you want to be? I think so, and like you know, like some of the a lot of the wrestling fans, the smarter wrestling fans are so like they're tired of seeing like uh, you know whoever it may be. It's been so long. I mean, you know, you got guys coming out here and make up and outfits on on TV and uh, in WWE and whatnot, and now you know Ring of Honor is just regular dudes. You know what I mean? Just out there working hard, trying to put on the best show we can. And uh, yeah, I think that. Definitely sets us apart from the other two. I was thinking about this when I was watching your... I, I just watched the last TV, and you guys did a, a promo, and it was just a, a classic Briscoe's promo. And I think about some of the guys in WWE where they have stuff scripted for them, and I just thought, you know, that would if these guys got, got signed to WWE, for example, and they tried to write you know, dialogue for you guys, it would be kind of a disaster, I would think, in the sense that, you know, the, the Briscoes are the Briscoes because of, of how they are, and why would you want to change yeah. that? So, we, we would definitely have to, whatever they wrote for us, we would definitely have to switch it up and put it in our own words, you yeah. know what I mean? Now, is there, have you ever worked for a promotion at any time where, where the guy in charge came up to you and said, and handed you a script, for example, or, or gave you some sort of goofy costume and said, we want you to play this character? Or it's pretty much everyone just kind of said, these are the Briscoes, let's just let them be who they are. 
Yeah, well, that's pretty much how it's been. I mean, besides for the uh, under-18 thing with the masks, but I ain't going to confirm that or not, you know what I mean? Sure. <laughs> besides for that, I mean, we've just been who we are pretty much. I mean, and it's crazy because you watch, like, the old CZW tapes when we were 16 and so skinny and so green and look so stupid out there in our little singlets. And, and like, we've been on the, the Northeast, like, this whole time, so... Like the Northeast fans has kind of watched this this whole, you know, the whole careers just progress along, and now, you know, we are where we are. So it's just crazy when you sit sit back and think about it. Well, where did Man Up come from? Man Up, uh, I mean, you know, we just sitting around drinking a few beers. I mean, that's what we've been doing a long time. You know, we sit down, drink a few beers, and somebody gets crazy. You know, Mark's getting ready to do something crazy, like. Whatever it is, jump off the roof or whatever, and he's up there. He gets a little timid, and I tell him, man, up. And then so he jumps off. <laughs> We've been doing that, you know, for, forever. Sure. Now, I, I, I once saw, I can't remember what the, the, the video was, but it was, a, it was a video that ROH had put together, and, and it starred you two. And you're out driving a truck, and you're drinking beer, and you're just doing all this shit, and I just thought, you know, they, clearly they just gave these guys a camera and just told them to go film film their lives. Is that essentially what happened? Yeah, yeah that was with the uh, with the guns and everything. Yes, shooting yeah. guns. Yeah, Gabe Sapolsky uh, came up with that idea, man. He was just like, I'm just going to come down there, and you guys just do what you do. I was like, man, shoot. Well, that that won't be hard, you know. <laughs> we just get all our guns out, get get, you know, some beer, set some targets up, shoot some things, and... That'll be that'll be easy, you know. Now, now is that life in Delaware, basically, or or I mean, do you guys do you guys stand out, or do you blend in in Delaware? No, we're just regular people down here, you know. But it's it's different. Like a lot of people are like, you know, Delaware is not even from the south. Well, I mean, like when you go up to northern Delaware, like up there by Pennsylvania and Philly, like it's a lot different than like when because we're all the way at the bottom. Like kind of stuck way over to the side there in the middle of nowhere, and and that's just that's just the type of stuff that goes on down here. That's just life, life in south the south the south of Delaware. That's right. Now you guys had a chance to you've got some WWE tryouts. I think you were invited down to uh, Florida Championship Wrestling, and and having watched a lot of of WWF as kids, I mean, was that a pretty cool deal? Oh yeah, very very yeah. It was we. I mean. It was really, really neat, man, because, I mean, you know, they called us, invited us to the uh, SmackDown tapings uh, back in, I believe it was November in uh, in Philly, and so we went up there before the show. We didn't have a dark match or anything, but wrestled around, you know, in front of everybody, and I guess they liked what they saw, invited us down to uh, down to Florida, and it was just neat seeing how, like, the whole process of what those guys go through, you know, to make it to the big time. Now, you know, you guys are both obviously still very young, early 20s, and mm-hmm. what's, your, what's your mindset as far as, as your wrestling career? Is this something where you figure, you know, we got more to prove here on the on the indie scene, we got more to prove in Ring of Honor, we're going we're gonna to do this mm-hmm. for a few years and, and think about moving on, or, or I mean, well, what are you thinking? I mean, we, we've proved... We've proved off. I mean, we're six time tag champs in ROH, you know. But as as ROH moves ahead, like with the HD net stuff and everything, you know, that's cool for just the company in general because we helped ROH get to that point. But as far as us, like in our careers, I mean, you know, it's a business, and and I mean, money talks out there, and you know, whatever whatever's going to be best for the Briscoes, like for my family, you know, I mean. I'm married now with a little kid, and I got to look out for my family. So whatever, you know, whatever is going to be the best business move for us in the future, that's that's where we'll probably end up. Now, you guys are obviously, as brothers, you, you know, I think some people would, would look at the team and, and assume that you're twin brothers, even though you're not. And, huh? you know, it would be kind of foolish. I, I can't imagine WWE saying, for example, we want Jay, but not Mark. Now, if if something like that did happen, I mean, have you guys ever discussed that as far as, would you be, you know, I, I would presume mm. you wouldn't hold each other back from something like that. Yeah, well, that, I mean, to tell you the truth, like, that thought has never even, we've never even thought about that, man, because I don't, I mean, I don't see how anybody could want, we're like, we're like a package deal, you know, like, sure. one of the, I think one of the most unique tag teams out there, 
And I mean, if I if I went up there, I'd just be like another just random dude. But then you see, uh, you know, a guy who looks just like me, talks, acts, you know, wrestles just like me. That's like, oh man, that's that's kind of different right there. There's two of them. So I mean, definitely, I think. I mean, I've never even thought about being like on my own. Sure. Like, you know, definitely a package deal here. This person, uh, we got a bunch of questions here for you. A lot of people are very excited to uh, hear you were going to be on the show here today. And uh, <laughs> this person here wants to know uh, the the age of the fall angle at uh, Man uh-huh. Up, uh, which, by the way, Man Up, I think was one of the best pay per views of all time. I'm sure you've heard that from a lot of people, but that yeah, show yeah. was awesome. And there was the angle afterwards, you know, strung up, bleeding all over the place. I think they actually edited it off the pay-per-view, if I recall correctly. Um, yep. And uh, what were your thoughts on that whole deal? Man, I mean, I remember just hanging up there, and I was just scared that the uh, damn cord that I was hanging from was going to break, and I was going to fall on my head, you know. But the whole thing, I mean, it came out, like, looking back on it, it came out really good. Because, I mean, I was bleeding all over Jimmy Jacobs and how they came in. And that was, like, kind of the introduction to Age of the Fall. You know, we just, I mean, we try to, when we're out there, you know, of course, we just try to make our, our whoever we're working with look as good as possible. And I think the, that angle, that, you know, whole spiel, I think everybody came off looking looking like superstars. You know what I mean? Yeah, and you also had the, the, had the uh, cage match with Samoa Joe and just bled a oh, gusher. Yeah. And uh I mean what are you what are your thoughts when you when you really hit a good one like that? Ah oh, man, that was uh like I really didn't know how good it was. Like I mean I saw it like dripping, but then like towards the end of the match like it started clotting up. And like I could feel like cuz it was getting in my eyes so I was wiping it out and as I was wiping it it was clotting. And I was like, is this my brain coming out? <laughs> you know, I was like what the hell is going on here? So, that was, I mean, that was scary. By the end of that match, I was, like, all but passed out in the ring. Got to the back, and I really, I mean, it, it was crazy. I can't remember too much, but, yeah, I definitely lost a lot of blood that night. What kind of what kind of matches do you guys like better? I mean, obviously, you've you've had some matches. Uh, you've had some of the matches with guys like uh, Nakajima, Ricky Marvin, just kind of more spectacular pro wrestling style matches. And then you've had the, uh-huh. the wild, crazy brawls, Steen and Generico. That type of deal. What what do you prefer? Um, man, it just depends on the day, really. You know, one day. I mean, it's fun to go out there and just do have a, a good, solid pro wrestling match, and you know, show off a lot of flashy things or whatnot. But I mean, sometimes it's good to get away from that and just be like, you know, hell with it. Let's just go out here and beat the hell out of each other for twenty minutes. Sure. Now you talked about telling Mark to man up and jump off the roof. And uh, and then he did, of course. Now, a lot of people, they think, God, this Mark is just crazy. It's just nuts. Has is, is he always been the, the crazy oh, one of the two? Oh, man. Oh, boy. Yeah, shoot. I mean, when he was probably, like, he couldn't walk yet. He was probably eight, nine months old. Uh, Mom told us that he crawled out of his crib, like, got on top of his crib, fell out of his crib, and broke his arm. And then, like, a couple years later, he jumped off the car, broke his arm. Like, his whole life, he's been doing just crazy stuff. Like, we have backyard tapes of me and Mark. Like, we built a ring in our backyard. And I used to, like, I was I was never really up for taking this crazy kind of stuff. But I remember we used to set tables on fire, and I would power bomb Mark through it. And, it, like, it would burn all his hair off. And he was cool with it. Sure. You know, he would jump, he would jump off the roof, put me through tables. I mean, he's always, always been crazy. And as your, and as his older brother, you encourage this behavior. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah, I think now, now when you guys, you mentioned you built a ring. Uh, I, I read somewhere that you guys had done a lot of stuff on a trampoline as well. Yeah, yep. That's uh, we started off like wrestling on the trampoline, you know, just like all little kids, and then. I mean, we pretty much wore that thing out. So there's, like, holes in the trampoline springs popping off because we would use, you know, chairs and barbed wire bats and, you know, mess trampoline all up. So we had the frame of, like, the trampoline. And we ended up building, like, just putting a bunch of two-by-fours together and, like, putting, like, a like a big square box pretty much on the frame of the trampoline, mm-hmm. put some tires underneath of it, took, like, a bunch of carpet padding. It was the stiffest ring ever. 
put a bunch of carpet padding down and had garden hose around the ring for the ropes. And we had our own little makeshift ring ring in the backyard. You know, when I was younger, uh, a lot of us used to wrestle on trampolines as well. And when you when you when you take a bump, for example, on a trampoline, obviously it's really easy because it's a trampoline, but then you get yeah. propelled like really high in the air afterwards. <laughs> and we had guys that they would they would get thrown off the trampoline, they would get stuck uh-huh. in the springs. It just it almost seemed like it was far more dangerous on the trampoline than if you'd actually made a ring. Oh, yeah, and then, like, when you, sometimes when you're taking a bump on a trampoline, like, if somebody's standing there, they can time it just right. We used to call it, like, shotguns. They can just kind of, like, bounce their legs real hard, like, right as you're hitting and sends you up, like, super hard. Oh, yeah, the double bounce, I think we called it. Yeah, yeah. You really propel that guy <laughs> off that thing. Did you have any oh, yeah. se- any serious trampoline-related injuries? I would think that would be even more dangerous. Um, let's see, trampoline-related. Um, one time, like, we had, like, two tables set up, and I went to do, like, the Austin Bomb. Sure. Uh, like, Tanaka, like, all, Mike Austin, Tanaka style to Mark yeah. off the trampoline, but I guess I didn't, like, when I got to the springs, like, I was worried about, like, kind of falling into the springs, so I just kind of launched him, like, from almost mid-trampoline, and he didn't really make it through the tables. He just kind of landed <laughs> back first on the, uh, on the metal part of the trampoline. Now, now it sounds like in a lot of these terrifying moves, it's you giving the move to Mark. <laughs> that's how it was. Well, most of the time, that's how it was. I remember on trampoline one time, he uh, he busted my head open like he did a moon salt, and I tried to get out of the way, and like his uh, like knee hit the back of my head, and I had to like go to the hospital and get like eight staples in my head. We were probably like twelve years old. Like mom and dad were flipping out. <laughs> I, I was just going to ask you. You would think that after all of these these injuries, your parents would discourage you from doing this for a living. <laughs> yeah, I think they're kind of immune to it by now. <laughs> That's good to hear. This uh, this person wants to know about the structure of your your matches. How you guys determine what? I mean, these are some very complex matches that you guys have at points. And and is it kind of a deal where you guys have worked so long together that you guys just you basically know what you're going to do the whole time, and there's there's not a lot that needs to be said, or or is there a lot of work that goes into putting these together? Um, well, it depends. Like, like if we know the guys really good, like wrestle them a few times, like we can we can just pretty much go out there and 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 just do our thing. But like when we're in Japan, like you know, trying to communicate with those guys, it's uh. Like, we're trying to, you know, put on a real good match just because it's Japan, like Budokan Hall or whatever. And so, like, that, that's that's pretty tough right there, trying to all four guys, you know, let everybody know what they're trying to do and how we're trying to structure the thing and everything. And, um, you know, so that, that gets tough over there. But for the most part, I mean, we've been doing it, you know, over 10 years now, like, and we've been a tag team for 10 years. So we've had, you know, quite a bit of tag matches, and we're we're just, when we're over here, it's just pretty much second nature by now. Now you talk about some old school teams, the Rock and Roll Express and that sort of thing, and now Jim Cornette has come to Ring of Honor, and mm-hmm. was this kind of like, uh, what was it like getting a chance to, uh, to meet him for the first time? Oh, man, he's great, man. He got a great, great mind for the business. Uh, you can tell... You know, you can tell he's been in it for 50 years or however long it's been. He's real, real smart. Like, not just about putting matches together and, you know, developing characters, but, like, promoting shows and, like, where to run shows at and, you know, getting people in the building, you know, butts in the seats. Like, he's good. Like, the whole, you know, he does it all, man. Jim Cornette's been, like, a huge help for Ring of Honor. Has he has he ever uh, given you guys any sort of advice? And what kind of stuff has he talked to you about? Oh, yeah. Like, when we were, like, I don't know if you remember, like, his first stint with ROH, he was, like, our manager. Mm-hmm. Like, the, I think it was the first time we won the belts. And, like, he was just, you know, showing us, like, like how to, how to the proper way to have a, like, old school tag match, like, psychology-wise and stuff, and, like, what we should do, when we should do it, and, and just small stuff like that. Like, we just try to pick his brain you know, every chance we get. Was that was that a big help in the sense that after he he taught you a little bit of that stuff, you found that you could have really really good matches, and it was maybe easier on the body, for example. Oh yeah, 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 
definitely. Because, like, before we met him, we were, I mean, cr- like, doing even crazier stuff. Like, I remember even I was doing some, some, like, stuff that my brother would do, like a splash, like, off the top rope, just on the floor, like, crazy, stupid dives or whatever. And, like, it points in the match where there shouldn't even been a dive. And Jim, you know, just told us to slow down, you know, just work smarter, you know what I mean, rather than harder. You know, a lot of times that gets you far further than, uh, you know, the way we were doing it. So, yeah, he definitely helped us helped us out a lot. How's the body feeling after, uh, God, you're like, uh, what is it, 23, uh, 24 years old and 10 years of this? Yeah, well, I mean, she's holding up. It's holding up. I mean, I be, uh, I'm definitely not as bad as my brother is. <laughs> <laughs> not a shock. Yeah, yeah, she's holding up. I mean, I get up in the morning a little bit. It takes me a little bit to get going, you know. The old bones ain't like they used to be, but. Now, how is how, how is getting married and having a child affected your life? Oh man, well, getting married really wasn't a big deal, but having a child has like changed everything. Like, man, it's crazy. Like keeping up with him. He is nine months old now and just out of control, like all over the place. Have you? Like have you... my wife. Oh, go ahead. Like she, like she kind of works. Like she, she works during the day, and I just usually wrestle on weekends or do little side jobs or whatever. So I'm pretty much home with him like all day, just trying to keep up with him. Man, it's crazy. Now, has he has he attempted to to do a uh, high spot out of his cage yet, like your brother or, or sorry, his crib? I'm sorry. Oh yeah, he comes off the couch, man, drops elbows on me. Oh boy, this <laughs> kid. <laughs> Now, now, what about the idea of, of uh, you know, your child someday is is probably going to want to get in the ring? Are you going to be uh, encouraging this behavior, or are you going to be saying, "Kid, let's let's talk about school here"? Well, I mean, I'll see. Well, I'm not. I'm just thinking at this point, uh, we might as well. I mean, Mark might as well get him a little younger so we can have a tag team. That's true. That's true. <laughs> your 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 son now is uh, one years old. Is that correct? Yeah, well, he's nine months, like nine and a half nine, months. So this is the perfect time for, for Mark to get working because then, you know, right. these two guys would be about the same uh, same distance apart as you two. That's right. You need to get on him about this. Yeah, I'm trying to maybe tonight he can go out to the bar and get lucky. <laughs> <laughs> and then we can start this thing up tonight. <laughs> now, now, does having a child, I mean, have you ever had a moment where you were in the ring, for example, and you were about to do something that, Maybe some people would consider kind of a stupid idea, maybe some crazy dive, and you suddenly just realized I got a youngin at home. I gotta, I gotta control myself better. Um. Hmm. Not really. <laughs> oh. Well, I, I, haven't put, I hope I haven't put that idea in your mind now. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Maybe next time, maybe I might think now that you just told me that. But <laughs> you know, it's never really. I mean, I'm, we're not as crazy. We don't do as much stupid stuff as we used to anyway. Sure. But, uh, yeah, but I don't know. I might think about that next time I'm on the top rope. What is the most uh, – you mentioned your brother having broken his arm countless times, and obviously there was the, the tooth incident and, and such, but what uh, what kind of injuries have, have you sustained during your career? Uh, well, pretty much, man. I just uh, – like, I've been known to bleed quite a, quite a bit. You know, I got a nice little collection of scars on my forehead and the back of my head, side of my head. But, um, I mean, other than that, man, knock on wood, like, pretty much, I'm pretty much healthy. Let's do a couple more here. This person wants to know, I heard a dog barking, by the way, a little earlier in the background. Uh, Oh, yeah. Is it true you guys are dog breeders? Yeah, well, uh, we were kind of breeding them. Like, back when I lived with my brother, we had, like, uh... We had probably six pit bulls, and we were kind of, kind of trying to breed them, you know. But um, I mean that ain't really the most lucrative business. It's more work than it is anything else. Feeding the damn dogs, cleaning up the poop, and trying to, you know, sell puppies and all that. But I mean, he still has a, he still has like four or five out of his house. But now here, where I live, it's just me. I just got the one dog now, so. Now you did an interview with Dr. Keith, who's a uh, a big part of our our website here, as a while ago, uh-huh. and apparently the discussion turned to uh, the fact that that Mark apparently has like a really high IQ. Yeah, I mean it's crazy. Like he got a uh, 
We did it good. He got like a fourteen hundred on his SATs. Got to be kidding like, me! He took an IQ test and was like, uh, him and Brian Danielson were like the two highest in the locker room. So wait, this was like the the whole locker room for some reason got together for an IQ test? Yeah, well, like we did it. Like it, it was a uh, some website that you can go to online, and like you got to pay five bucks or whatever. They ask you a bunch of questions, and like yeah, Mark and Brian were like the top two. Wow. Somehow that should be <laughs> you need to you need to turn that into some sort of storyline here at some point. Yeah, I mean it's crazy, but. I, <laughs> It's, it's be crazy to think, you know, if he didn't lose so many brain cells through his life, how smart he'd be right now. And well, that is uh, that is an arguable point as well. I was thinking some of the long lines of Mark. You know, Mark maybe decides to leave the team because he's going to go to Stanford, and you have to tell him to man up and come back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I like that. Something like yeah. that. Yeah, a lot of different ideas here. This person uh, wants yeah. to know about uh, any thoughts from the first ever or your first CZW best of the best tournament. Hmm, man, that was, I mean, looking back, like when I w- watched the match now, I was like, oh, man, we did so much unneeded stuff. But, like, at that time, in front of that crowd, like, that kind of made us. Sure. Like, we were just, like, we hadn't really had that breakout match yet, and that was, like, like CZW's biggest show. And at that time, CZW was, like, the biggest promotion, like, on the Indies, like, over here on, on the East Coast or whatever. And, uh, yeah, that match, I mean, when we found out we were going to be wrestling each other, like, we were, like, I mean, we we had that match, like, a month ahead of time, like, what we were going to do. And it was just, it ended up being, like, our breakout match, I think. Have you heard comparisons between the two of you and the Diaz brothers? The Diaz brothers. Nick and Nate Diaz, MMA? Um... Not really. Really? I've had a lot of people say that you're like the pro wrestling version of the Diaz brothers. Or maybe vice versa. You guys were around first. but uh, Yeah, I'm going to have to YouTube them. Yeah, you're going to have to YouTube these guys. Now, any you've obviously been doing this for a long time, very ingrained in pro wrestling. If if you were 15 years old today, uh, would you be looking at mixed martial arts as a career or just you love pro wrestling uh, so much? I think, I mean, it's a, it's a good possibility that we probably, you know, because... MMA right now is, like, the hot thing, you know what I mean? Like, if I was a kid, I would be more, like, into MMA than I am, like, TNA. Sure. You know, like, back, back when we were um, back when we were young, like, ECW, like, it was the underground cool thing to do. Like, people just, you know, going crazy, smashing each other in the head with chairs, jumping off of bleachers or whatever, you know. That was, like... That really appealed to us back then. So, yeah, I think, man, if I could go back, like if I was 15 now, I think there's definitely a strong possibility that we might try to get into the MMA. Let's talk about the pay-per-view here very quickly. It's Saturday night. It is at the Grady Cole Center Memorial Stadium. It's in Charlotte, North Carolina. The Mm -hmm. stomping grounds of Ric Flair. Yes, sir. Bob Eaton's going to be there. Dutch Mantell is going to be there. Tommy Young is going to be there. Going to be some uh, big names from the past. And, of course, you guys are facing the Kings of Wrestling ROH Tag Team title match. And I presume very much looking forward to this show? Yes, sir. Very much. I mean, this first time we've ever wrestled in Carolina, so it's always nice to, you know, go go south and wrestle. And, you know, Kings of Wrestling, they're a good team. They're on a roll right now, but... I mean, you stepping in the ring with the best, you know, it's going to be it's going to be a good show. And uh gofightlive.tv is the place to go to check out the pay-per-view and of course ROH wrestling and you uh keep up any any my spaces or facebooks or anything of that nature? Man, well, my son actually broke my laptop like about a couple months ago. So right now <laughs> I'm kind of uh just working on getting me a new laptop, but I had a my space and uh, I need to get back on that and keep updating it, man. And uh, we have a website, briscoebrothers.com, you know, go on there, get you a T-shirt. But, yeah, we definitely need to get, like, more into the uh, online world. We do have one last question here, and uh, I'm sure you've been asked this many times, but what what is your favorite kind of beer? And are you a beer guy or, or is the occasional hard liquor uh, what yeah, you go for? Yeah, hard liquor. When it comes to uh, beer, I would say probably my favorite beer – I mean, Budweiser is always like a classic, you know. Sure. But 
I mean, I don't know. Sometimes, like, uh, Roddy Strong gets on me, man, about diet. He's like, man, Bud got too many calories in it. So I've been drinking a little bit of Coors Light here lately, but... <laughs> and, uh... I know it sounds like a like a wimp for just saying that. You know, Mark still drinks the hard stuff, the Guinness or whatnot. I, I was actually going to say we 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 are going to uh, ignore the story about the the masked wrestlers early in your career, and <laughs> and we don't have to go into a lot of details about this. But I heard that this past weekend, Mark had a lot to drink. Um, yeah, damn right. <laughs> yeah, he was pretty much smashed. <laughs> yes. It was uh, apparently quite the uh, quite the deal this weekend. But hey, you were out in Phoenix, so what the hell can you do? That's right, WrestleMania weekend, man. That's right. Did you get a chance to go to the show, or did they fly you home that uh, Sunday morning? No, no, no. We flew home that next day. Oh well. Yeah. Well, it could be worse. You at least got a chance to head out there for those two shows. Well, I want to thank you very right. much, Jay, for doing the show today. It was awesome. And uh, good luck this weekend. Good luck, as always, with the team. And uh, hope things work out. And hopefully one of these days we can get you back on the show here today and talk more about this stuff. Yeah, man, that sounds good. Thanks for having me. All right, thanks very much. And thanks, everybody, for listening. We'll talk to you again after a while. How's it going, everybody? Brian Alvarez here on Figure Four Daily. It is Wednesday, December 15th, 2010, here at figure4online.com slash wrestlingobserver.com. We have a very special show today. We are going to be joined by all three of the Briscoes. Jay, Mark, and Papa Briscoe are all going to be on the show today, and we're going to go one at a time, so we're going to have people yelling all over each other, and we're going to start with Jay today, and I'm very excited about this, and Jay, how you doing? Oh, man, Brian, you caught me at the perfect time. One of the dogs just took a big-ass shit right on the floor. Wow. Well, that is the perfect time, because now you don't have to worry about it. Damn right. I'll let somebody else take care of it. Obviously, you guys, all three of you, are uh, facing the Kings of Wrestling and Shane Hagedorn. It's Saturday night, Final Battle 2010, December 18th, New York City, and I presume you're very excited for this match. Oh, hell yeah. You know, shit, I mean, we've been having this feud with the Kings. She's been building... You know, have we've had shit. We've wrestled them plenty of times, man, and it's pretty much like the culmination and the best part of the whole thing. We got the big man in the ring with us, getting ready to showcase his wrestling skills. Now, we're going to talk to uh, your father here in a little while, but uh, we'll get some of the scoops here first. How did your father get involved? I mean, I, I was told that at some point there was some sort of angle that involved your father and your mother with, uh, uh, I think it was uh, Shelton Benjamin and Charlie Haas, uh, ECWA. What happened there? Oh, well, shoot, that was way back in the day. You're talking about mom. Back, it was probably 10 years ago. It was with Charlie Haas and his brother, Russ Haas, at the time, who uh, he passed, I think it was nine years today, God rest his soul. But, um, yeah, it was with the Haas brothers. Uh, mom hopped up there in the ring, and uh, Kevin Kelly was their manager at the time. And, you know, he was uh, giving us a hard time. So, Mom, you know, I guess she's seen enough of the shit. She hopped right up there. And uh, ended up getting the uh, splatal elbow drop from the Haas brothers. Oh, my God. <laughs> and then presumably your father had to jump in there to make the save. Oh, yeah, and gave Kevin Kelly the Stone Cold Stunner. <laughs> now, <laughs> your your father, I mean, he's obviously, both of your parents have supported you guys forever. I mean, uh, you know, yeah. uh, I mean, just all the way back to the very beginning. And, and we'll talk to him, but, I mean, have they were they wrestling fans like before you guys got into this? Uh, oh, yeah, hell yeah. Shit, Dad, uh, man, I remember back in the day when we were, like, shit, five, six years old, you know, Dad taking us down to the Civic Center and uh, watching the old WWF shows, man. Shit, Dad, he was the biggest fan ever, you know, and he was the one. He drug us to the shows with him, and shit, we loved it, man. So ever since we were small and then it kind of built up, you know, we got to, we got to starting to like it a little bit more. Then we drug Dad with us to the uh, ECW arena about when we was like 12, 13. And shit, once we seen ECW, man, it was just on from there. Now, I presume that you guys are just very, very proud of your father. But, I mean, do you ever look at some of these these interviews and some of these, these angles that you've shot for ROH and thought, we are being completely overshadowed by our father here? Well, pretty much, man. You know, Dad's a bad man. I mean, shit, he was down there getting ready to go to the NFL, but, you know, got in a little car accident that kind of messed him up. But, uh, shit, man, Dad, you know, he was an athlete, man, a hell of a football player and wrestler and everything. So, uh, and you know, now that he's now that he's on the exploded onto the ROH scene, you know, shit, I think next time 
I think he's uh I think he's in in line for a title shot here here soon. Now we've got a video up on the front page right now. It's you guys training your father. I believe he's doing the bench press to get ready oh, yeah. for this this battle here on uh, on Saturday night. And uh, what kind of training have you put him through for this this match? Oh shit, we getting him ready, man. You know, got him working out, doing a little bench press, doing a little curls, some squats, and everything. You know. Got him uh, boxing, hitting the bag, shadow boxing. He boxing with Mark. You know, he knocked Mark out. Shit, he he ready. <laughs> I presume that's not the first time he's knocked Mark out. No, hell no. I figured as much. Now, you guys uh, are often just given the video camera. I think we talked about this briefly the last time you were on the show, but it seems that sometimes when they want to get some footage for the program, they just hand you guys a, a video camera and they say, just go shoot some some stuff. Is that basically how it goes down? I mean, you know, pretty much just give the Briscoes the camera and just let us do what we do. I mean, shit. This just, you know, we just do, we're just doing our normal everyday shit. And uh, I guess, you know, the, the the majority of people, you know, they might find it a little entertaining. But, you know, to us, it's just everyday shit. Now, the last big pay-per-view was the uh, Big Bang Show on April 3rd. All of these, of course, are available at GoFightLive.tv, internet pay-per-view. And you lost to the Kings of Wrestling, Herio and Claudio. They uh, they cheated, obviously, using the uh, the loaded knee pad, I believe. Oh, hell they... yeah. Every, every loss we got to them, they cheated. Of course. That's, that's what they do. What were your thoughts on that match? Oh, man, shit. You talking about the bloodbath, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, shit. I mean... I thought it was a hell of a match myself, you know. Everybody lost a lot of blood out there, aside for Claudio. But uh, me, Mark, and Hero, we all, uh, shit, you know, we was bleeding buckets out there going at it. That was actually the first match after um, Hero and my dad got into it, you know. So there's a lot of bad blood there, you know. And, and shit, I gave uh, Sarah the J-Driller, but shit, you know, that's just, that's what she got, you know. Hell with her. But, you know, he, he put his hands on our dad, and so it was a lot of bad blood going into that match, and, you know, it just exploded, and, you, and shit. You, I mean, you've seen what happened. Now, would you would you rather uh, put your hands on Sarah Del Rey or, uh, or Shane Hagedorn if you had the choice? Oh, Hagedorn all day, that little pecker head. <laughs> Now, now let me ask you about the the the, uh, the the pecker headline. It's your it's basically your father's catchphrase now at this point. He yeah. uh, he he first I believe spit it out after the uh, the deal where you were kicked in the balls. Kicked uh, in the balls. We're getting ready to make some t shirts. Ain't nobody gonna kick my boys in the balls, especially not you, you little pecker head. Now now how? Because I mean personally, when I watched that, I was I was crying with laughter. How how do you you get away with with? Uh, I mean, how do you not laugh during some of these deals that your your father's doing? You just you've been around this your whole life. It's just it's accepted now. It doesn't catch you off guard. Man, shit, my dad's been calling me a pecker head long as I can remember. Now when you when you were there, and and obviously you know Chris Hero, he uh, he laid your your father out with a forearm. Uh, but prior to that, your your dad had uh, walloped him with a slap, I believe. Oh, yeah. And, uh, yeah, that slap, uh, I think Chris Hero on this show actually noted that uh, he may have been knocked for a loop a little bit by that uh, that right hand. Your dad had done a little bit of uh, boxing back in the day? Oh, man, he did a little bit of everything. You know, he was a, he was a bar fighter, man, old school shit. You, you wait till Saturday night, you see dad in the ring. It's going to be on and popping. What did your father think, like, the first time that you guys ever did the brother versus brother match? Well, shit. He, I mean, he'd been seeing me and Mark go at it our whole lives. I mean, I remember back when we was like, shit, we could barely walk. I remember Dad used to give us boxing gloves, and he used to be the ref, and we used to be down there wailing on each other, three, four years old. And, and uh, at the time, uh, like, you know, I'm the older brother, so naturally I used to whoop Mark's ass. <laughs> And, I mean, Dad used to get mad at Mark. Come on, Mark, you ain't worth a shit, you know. Sure. Getting on him, and we shit. We used to go at it. Now, now I'm going to ask all three of you this question, and, and uh, perhaps I'll get the same answer. Perhaps you'll all give me a different answer. But uh, in in the most recent promo, you were talking about how your your dad had given you a whooping, and he made a man out of you, which nobody had done to Shane Hagedorn. Now, now which of the two brothers, you or Mark, which one of you got the worst beaten growing up? Oh, man, it ain't no question. And when you ask the other two, they're going to tell you the same damn thing. It was me all day. I guess because I was the older brother, they felt like I was kind of the bully. And, man, shit, Dad used to whoop my ass. I remember he had this thing. 
Like we used to play flag football back in the day, and we had these little uh, goal posts. And um, the goal post was nothing but like a two-by-four with a big-ass board nailed to the top of it that said like the 10-yard line or whatever. Sure. Shit. Dad used to bend my ass over the damn trash can and grab that damn board and crank back and wail my ass. I remember, and, and this is a true story, I had a bruise on my ass that was there for like two weeks. Wow. And I, yeah, like nobody believed me, so I was walking around the house with my ass out. I was like, man, look, I, I, shit, I ain't shitting y'all. And yeah, hell yeah. Now, now, was your brother, I'll ask him this question too, maybe I'll get a different answer. As the younger brother, would he, would he ever cause trouble in the sense that your parents didn't see it, but then when they found out something had happened... He he uh, blamed it on you, for example, and you took the whooping for him. Oh, hell yeah. You know that, man. You know that shit, that little sneaky bastard. Shit, I remember one time we was uh, we was going at it fighting, man, and then so I thought the fight was all done and everything. You know, we was like, all right, whatever. I was, like, walking away. I was getting ready to walk down the stairs, and Mark came and uh, he gave me, like, a reverse STO. If, if you know what I'm talking about. Yes. Right as I, as I was at the top of the stairs. So I took the STO all the way down the stairs, busted my whole shit open. I got up off the stairs, man, and whooped his ass. And right as I was whooping him, Dad walks in. Oh. <laughs> so you already know what time it was. I know what time it was right there, yes. Well, that's what brothers do. And I would presume that, that growing up just, you know, when you beat on each other the whole time, when the time comes that trouble's coming – you guys can very easily become a team because you know that the other guy is the toughest dude you know. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's been plenty of times, man, where we, you know, had to handle business, but, uh, you know, people, you know, get big mouths. We out at the bar or something. Somebody get a little drunk and start talking shit. And, I mean, if we're together, and especially if we got dad with us, you know, I mean, that's not the thing to do. When you, when you got three Briscoes in the same bar and you talking shit to one of us, it's going to be a long night for you, buddy. So I presume that at some point there was probably some trouble that you and your brother were taking care of, and uh, and you know maybe the the people causing the trouble they weren't too concerned. And then when your father walked up, that's when they knew that shit was about to go down. Oh hell yeah, cause shit, dad wasn't walking up there like trying to break the shit up. Dad was walking in there throwing blows. <laughs> so just just he was he was uh, he just got involved. You want to ask questions? Yeah, hell no. Shit, Dad just walked up. He seen we was we was scrapping with somebody, and Dad, you know, naturally he just came in there, had her back like a third brother almost. Now, was your dad a father of the Freebirds growing up? Because you kind of have a, a three man team here. Yeah, well, yeah, it, it kind of was, you know, because I mean, Dad's a crazy ass dude, and, and you know how me and Mark are, so we just kind of, you know, three peas of a pie. Now, is your father a big fan of uh, mixed martial arts? Actually, I mean, yeah, we look at it. He looks at it, man. But, I mean, he's more of a football man, you know. Like, sure. like he played college football. He he played football forever, man. And he is, like, diehard always. Like, he's mainly football. Yeah. Well, that makes sense. Now, now the uh, the match coming up, we, we've we talked about the uh, the Kings of Wrestling feud has been going on for a while. And, and obviously, this weekend, you're going to vanquish these men. And from that point, what comes next? Ah, uh, shit. I mean, whoever, you know, whoever want to step up to the plate, you know, we ready. I mean, shit, it's a lot of a lot of teams out there that think they tough. I mean, this last weekend out Louisville, Kentucky, uh, Charlie House and Shelton Benjamin was, you know, running their mouth a little bit. And I know they big superstars on, on Monday Night Raw or whatever, but shit, it's a whole different ball game when you come to Ring of Honor. So, I mean, maybe them. Uh, you know, whoever, whoever won it. Now, I, I think, uh, is it true that at the tapings you had a match with Adam Revolver and Ted the Trailer McNailer? Oh, man, if you want to call that a match, I, shit. If you want to call it a match, yeah. But So basically you gave him a, a sound beating. Oh, hell yeah. All right, sound beating, definitely, yep. That's good to hear right there. Well, let's uh, get Mark here on the line, and uh, we'll see what he's got to say. All right, and you know, man, just to warn you, Mark, damn sure he ain't going to be nearly as entertaining as his older, older brother here. Well, we'll get Dad on after that. <laughs> so I don't, I don't know. He had, a, he had a couple shots. He might be able, he might do all right. Oh, that'll be even better. Perfect. <laughs> all right, thanks very yeah, much, Jay. Go. Let's get Mark on. All right. Mr. Brian Alvarez, how we doing? Mark, how you doing? 
I'm doing just fine. We've actually never had you on the show here before, and uh, I, I've been alerted that you may have had a few shots. Uh, one or two, yes, sir. <laughs> Now, I asked your uh, brother this question. I'm going to ask all of you, and, and uh, I'm, I'm interested to see if I will get the same answer or if I'll get a different answer. And the question is, of you two brothers, which of you was was given the worst beating growing up from your father? From 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 dad? Yeah. Oh, well, that uh, I ain't going to lie to you. Mr. Alvarez, that was uh, Jay, hands down. <laughs> <laughs> that's well, that's what he said. So good to know that you're you're in agreement there. And I asked him this question as well. You, as the younger brother, I I, I think you probably heard the story about the STO on the stairs. Uh, were there a lot of incidents like that where maybe you knew that your brother was the one that was going to get the beating, and so you perhaps set him up in certain ways? Uh, perhaps, perhaps. <laughs> Nothing really sticks out, though. No, no. I mean, uh, maybe I. Now that you mentioned that one incident, it is uh I have a little slight recollection of the uh of that time in question, but uh yeah, I can't remember. I mean most of the time it was just he was the one being a little badass, so he would be the one getting the whooping. So, sure. you know, that just of how course. it goes, right? That makes sense, yeah. Now you you obviously, as everybody knows, did a lot of wrestling before you turned eighteen. And some of that may have been done surreptitiously under a mask, perhaps. But, um, I mean, how, how hard was it to, to, I mean, for you, knowing that your brother could get in there and do this stuff, and you really weren't allowed to at the time, how, how difficult was that for you? Man, it was, it was, it was just a pain in the ass, man. I mean, because, and the thing about it was, the state of Pennsylvania was the, well, Pennsylvania and New York was mainly where I had trouble at, and they didn't make this law until... When I was 15, I wrestled in Pennsylvania, and they didn't give a shit. They didn't say nothing. When I was 16, I wrestled in Pennsylvania. They didn't say nothing. I'm 17, and all of a sudden, for some odd reason, they want to crack down on underage wrestlers for whatever reason. So it was really, really frustrating. So basically you had two years, and then you had to serve a one-year suspension, essentially. Yeah, uh, not an official suspension, but Basically. I had a one-year period of time where I wasn't allowed to wrestle Damn. as Mark Briscoe in the state of Pennsylvania. Now, as Kenny Murdoch, on the other hand, he had a a match or two. <laughs> he had quite a career, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, I, it's it's hard to tell if we'll see see that guy again. But uh, don't tell Frank Talent, the state commissioner. <laughs> Now, now you, again, as the younger brother, I mean, obviously a very different story from your older brother. As the younger guy, I mean, when you guys were training and, and working out and, and such when you were young, I mean, presumably you were the guy where your brother was like, let me try this move on you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Presumably a oh, lot yeah. of head head dropping and that sort of thing. Yeah, and even more so before the official training, uh, before our official uh, professional training commenced, like when we were in the backyard, that was even worse. <laughs> now, now, was, would you say I don't want to cause any family friction here? Obviously, since you guys are wrestling on on Saturday, but would you say that due to the the beating, perhaps that your brother gave you when you were younger, that that you would be the tougher brother of the two, or hey, would it that, would it be a case where since your father beat him and he beat you, you're both tough? Well, without a shadow of a doubt, uh, what you just said. Is true, but I'll put it this way to you. Uh, Jay, what, what my behind, uh, religiously and on a regular basis until I was about 17 years old. And at that time, I had kind of, you know, gained the, gained the knowledge of how he was going to come at me. Sure. And at the same time, I had, uh, every beat I took made me tougher and tougher. So I'm 25 now, so since about the last six or seven years, he knows better. He don't come at me no more because it was a it, it there was a point there when uh, it just the uh, the the tide changed if you uh, if you know what I'm saying, Mr. Brian Alvarez. The, the little brother grew up exactly, and it just happened all of a sudden. Now, now, have both of you brothers grown up enough where uh, Dad would not think of of laying a whooping on you if if something happened, or or do you do you still live in fear of the man? Well, uh, he's getting a little up there in years, so, and um, I don't believe that he's quite as fast as he used to be. But uh, 
you always got the you always got the fear you always got the fear of the big man. He's uh he's the head and we just uh he's the tree and we're branches, if you know what I mean. Sure, yeah. So basically you can run faster is what you're saying. Hey, yeah, well, well no, I can still run about the same. He can't run as fast. I see. So so you can run faster than him to to escape if need be. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, you've got the uh, match coming up on Saturday with the uh, Kings of Wrestling Internet Pay-Per-View, ROH Final Battle 2010 That's in right. uh, New York City. What's it like for, uh, I mean, obviously, you, you uh, the three Briscoe, uh, I just can't say all brothers, you're, one of them is your father, but the Briscoe family, Man. going from Delaware to, to downtown New York City. What, what's, a night, what's a night on the town like for you guys? <laughs> well, it involves, uh, believe it or not, a drink or two. Shocking. Yeah, yeah. I know it. I know it. Don't uh don't fall out your seat, but believe it or not, it'll involve a libation or and I, two. And I presume that your father is, is joining in with this uh these festivities. Oh, without a doubt. Without a doubt. We uh we like to uh show the city folk how uh you know, the proper way to drink bourbon whiskey. That's uh that's I would say probably the drink of choice around here. Sure. Jim Beam Black, it don't really get much better. Now, now, what kind of what kind of tolerance do you do you personally? We'll start with you. What kind of tolerance do you have to the liquor? I mean, can you take uh, five, six shots and be all right, or or uh, you know, after three or four, is it kind of like you know you're? Oh no, tipsy? no, five or six. I'm I'm just starting to starting to I'm warming up. I see. Yeah, I'm 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 I'm, I'm getting I'm starting to get there. I mean, and when I say get there, not get drunk. I'm starting to I'm starting to feel right. You know, it's about go time after about five or six. Now, if you and and your brother and your father were all sitting around a table and there was an unlimited bottle of liquor and you all just had to keep taking shots until you passed out, who would be the last man standing? Uh, to be honest with you, I think it would be I would be the last man standing without a doubt. But uh, probably Jay would probably go down just before Dad. And then I would probably be drinking for another, I don't know, another hour and a half or so. <laughs> so you've, you've, you've built this up over a long period of time. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I was, uh, I mean, I try to stay right with the law anymore, but I got my third DUI at age 20. Oh, Jesus. And, yeah, it's not a good thing. I mean, I, don't get me wrong, anybody who's not 21 years old and listening to this program, I don't suggest that you do the same thing. It's not cool. I mean, it's caused me a lot of grief in my life, but I've grown, I've uh, built that tolerance up, been working on it for years. Now, we don't like to talk about underage drinking here, but uh, perhaps you know a couple of buddies that maybe drank while wearing masks, and uh, at what age would, would these fellas have, have started their drinking career? Oh, well... It was uh it was before the masks were even necessary. <laughs> really? Yeah, I mean, definitely. So just over over many years you've you've built up this tolerance to uh to Jim Bean. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Definitely. It's uh and, and it's weird because other cause other drinks uh like if we're talking about I don't know, let's see if we're talking about scotch or we're talking about vodka I mean, I can drink them, and I can drink them all night long, but they're just going to make me tired. They're going to make me want to, you know, go to sleep. But something about that good bourbon whiskey, that that? Uh, that good straight bourbon whiskey, I was telling them how bur- uh, anything but bourbon, it don't get me drunk, just make me tired. <laughs> yeah, anything but bourbon, it don't get me drunk, just make me tired. But the the the, the good bourbon whiskey, Jim Beam is good, but the Jim Beam with the black label is what you want to go with. Now is that is that pretty much your your single drink of choice or or let's say you're at a bar and you know that trouble might be coming later and so you you want to drink a certain something that's going to really get your dander up what would that be Oh that would be Jim Beam Black Oh there you go <laughs> But see no yeah but don't don't let me mislead you now uh on the normal on the regular night I'm not all going to bar and order Jim Beam Black I'm going to go in the bar and I'm going to order a beer and I will not drink light beer. That's definitely against everything I believe in life. <laughs> light beer is, it don't do nothing but make you burp and make you fart from time to time. And so would but, you would you find yourself a little disappointed with Stone Cold Steve Austin after he switched to light beer? Yes, yes, sir. And that was a point that I was planning to make. 
before this program was over. Really? The Stone Cold switch from Budweiser's to Miller Lights, it hurt my heart. And it hurt his career, quite frankly. Yeah, hey, that, that's ever since then, I mean, do you see Stone Cold on TV anymore? No. That's my question for you, Mr. Brian Alvarez. It's it, it actually, I had not ever thought of that before, but it has been all downhill since he switched to light beer. That's exactly right. Now, ask your brother this question. I don't know if you've got a different answer, but once you uh, obviously dispatch of the Kings of Wrestling and Shane Hagedorn this weekend, who else would be uh, on your list of, of folks you'd want to uh, uh, lay a whooping onto? Well, um, Kenny King and Rhett Titus, I mean, they're not necessarily, I mean, is, we don't really have too much uh, bad blood built up between them, but they could, uh, they seem like they're the type of guys that could use a good whooping, if you know what I mean. <laughs> I was just going to ask you, what would happen if you went to your, uh, what is your favorite bar out there in Delaware? In Delaware, well, uh now this is a uh, there was a place called the House, and unfortunately this establishment was closed down recently. Oh man! Yeah, yeah, it, it, it is a sad thing. And illegal uh, activity yeah. or, or some other reason? Uh, excuse me. Illegal activity or, or some other reason? Um, little column A, little column B. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but Jay used to work up there, and uh, that was that. I mean, that was the place to go. That was about. Uh, two minutes from where I live, about 30 seconds drive from where Jay lives. I mean, it was, that was the place to go. Now we're, uh, we do a lot of drinking, you know, either at my, at my place, at Jay's place, over at dad's place. Not saying that we don't hit the bar from time to time, but now, it, 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 it's more of a thing. And also a safety reason. Like I was trying to tell the youngins earlier, don't drink and drive. You know, we just chill. We drink a couple you know, shots, beers, whatever we're drinking. And you don't and have then, to drive anywhere. Huh? You don't have to drive anywhere. Exactly. We Like, I get my old lady to run me home. You, you know, it's not like we all got rides if we do that. If we go to the bar, then more than likely the old lady's going to be mad with me. So she's definitely not going to give me a ride. That is that is true. Now, you know was it I mean? called the house or the home? No, it, it was called the house. The house. Yes, and they have been... Since they closed down, a place called Station 7 has taken over, and Station 7 is is not a bad establishment at all, but it's not the house. Now, if the house were still open today, and Kenny King and Rhett Titus went in there for a night of drinking, yeah, how would that go over? Uh, I, I mean, it depends on their respect level, if you... It, it, if you understand what I'm saying, sure. So, so just Rhett Titus walking into the 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 house would not would not result in an automatic beating. He'd be given a, a chance. Rhett Titus walking into the house would result in me putting a shot of Jim Beam on the bar for him and one for myself. And I say, "Go ahead, boy, belly up, bottoms up." <laughs> and that's how you determine whether there was a beating in store for this guy. Exactly. exactly. Later on in the evening. Now, what do you, uh, we don't want to talk about strategy too much, but uh, the final question here, the, the show Saturday night, what, what are you looking to do to uh, the Kings of Wrestling and, and Shane Hagedorn? Who are you most looking to get your hands on? Oh, it's going to be tragic, Mr. Brian Alvarez. Tragic. It's going to be tragic. Yeah, uh, all three of them. Don't, we don't like neither one of them, but uh, Shane Hagedorn has disrespected my father on multiple occasions now. It's true. And... That shit don't fly. Excuse my language, but that don't fly. So he's he's in particular in for real trouble. He got a bullseye right on his ass. Excuse my language, but he got a bullseye right on his ass. Now, are you are you a little bit sad that most likely you're not going to get your hands on Shane Hagedorn because your father is likely to uh, beat the shit out of him? Yeah, well, you see, I mean, it's not necessarily uh, a sadness that I'm feeling. It's more of a uh, more of a uh, expectation, like a great building of expectation that I just can't wait to see what happens when the big man get his hands on that little peckerhead Shane Hagedorn. It's going to be ugly. I guarantee it. Well, now is a perfect time to get the big man here on the phone. So, Mark, I want to thank you very much for doing this today, and uh, let's bring on Papa here. 
Yes, sir. Mr. Brian Alvarez, I thank you, and God bless you. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Papa Briscoe, how are you doing? Oh, man, I am doing great. Should I refer to you as Papa? Would that be the best? You know, it really doesn't make any difference. That's fine. That'll be good. I actually don't even know what your, your first name is. I've only heard Daddy and Papa Briscoe. <laughs> My first name is Mike. Mike. That's right. But I guess you, I have heard Mike Briscoe before, yeah. But you know what? You call me whatever. It doesn't make any difference. Now, Mike, I'm not just telling you this because you'd kick my ass, but I think that you have been fantastic on Ring of Honor. I, I have been extremely impressed with your, uh, your in-ring action and, even more importantly, with your, your uh, interviews and your promos. And the obvious question is, how long have you been a wrestling fan? <laughs> hey, Brian, listen, I since you know what, these guys... These guys of mine, I mean, I really kind of feel responsible for getting them involved because when they were just little, come on, boys, let's go watch wrestling. I mean, I have been a wrestling fan as long as I can remember. What kind of wrestling did you take them to when they were younger? We would, we would, of course, WWE was huge and still is. Uh, we would watch WWE on on TV and uh, we watch WWE, we watch WCW on TV, and then we go to W. Uh, we went to some WWE and some WCW, and then uh, then w- once they kind of got involved, we started looking at uh, ECW, and we would go when we went to ECW arena, it was unbelievable. Now you, uh, I know you're. Uh, I think it was Jay was talking about how you had uh, been a big football fan growing up, and you always wanted to. Uh, and you did play football, I guess, for a long time. And did you ever think about getting into wrestling prior to? Uh, I guess when your sons finally broke in. <laughs> you know, no, myself personally, I never really. I always loved it. And you know, when they were just when they were little, we would get in the back and we would wrestle. And I can, ne- I'll never forget. We were on a trampoline by the garage one day, and we were uh, we were wrestling, and we would imitate the Big Show and every- And I was always the Big Show because I was so much bigger than them. Sure. <laughs> And I'll never forget a day. I can't remember what a day. I grabbed Jay like the Big Show by the throat and picked him up and threw him. And he got so mad. And he, he said, okay, now I took your finishing move. Now you take mine. And he was going to super kick me in the head. <laughs> and, and I said, no, no, no. You think I'm, 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 I'm not stupid now. I'm not going to let you do that to me. But anyway, I no, I, I I never have thought of wrestling, but I've just kind of enjoyed watching them. Well, it looks like you've been uh, you've been taking notes, I guess, because uh, some some fine performing you have done for the uh, the ROH on HD Net show, and obviously you've got a big match coming up this weekend. And tell us a little bit about uh, Shane Hagedorn. You know, Brian. Now. Uh... You're getting ready to get me pissed off now. You're really getting ready to get me pissed off. Because, you know, the boys can take care of their business. Yes. The boys can take care of their business. But we kind of look out for each other's back. And when somebody like a little pecker-headed Shane Hagedorn is going to interfere time after time after time, we can only take so much. We can only take so much. So you know what? The boys can take care of what they need to take care of. Shane Hagedorn, your ass is mine. Now, Shane Hagedorn this weekend is uh, is uh, one-third of this team right here. And, and is there any concern that you're also going to be in the ring with Chris here and Claudio Casagnoli? Or are you pretty pretty confident you can handle yourself? Brian, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. We've been in bars and been hit by bigger, badder some bitches than Hero and, and Castanoli. I can tell you what, we can take a damn, we can take a, we can take whatever anybody has to give out. We have done it, and Hero and Castanoli, ah, shit, we'll take it. No problem. Now, I asked your two sons this question, and they both gave me the same answer, so I presume I'm going to get the same answer from you, but which of the two brothers, Mark or Jay, Got the worst beaten growing up. <laughs> I, <laughs> Jay, 
I would whoop Jay's ass. You know what? When Jay was just a baby in the cradle and he was in there crying one night, I went in there and whooped his ass and his mama got so mad at me. He said, oh, my. And I left a weld on his ass. I said, well, shit, he'll know now. <laughs> but there ain't no question, Jay. Now, now, what happened? I, I, you're, you're, uh, Jay told me of, of the story with um, years back when, when your wife was accosted by a wrestler in the ECWA, uh, one of the Haas brothers, and you were forced to jump in and, and uh, attempt to save the day. What, do you, what are your memories of that? Oh, man. I, you know, Brian, it's, around here, we all, we all won, and we all for one. Everybody's got everybody's back. And I remember uh, Mom had had plenty. Mom had had all she wanted to take. I can remember when we would go to the shows and the Haas brothers would always interfere and, and kind of come out and beat the shit out of the boys. And Mama would say, oh, man, I, I just can't keep happening. Well, one night Mama decided she's had enough. So Mama jumped on up in the ring. And uh, then when the Haas brothers got decided they were going to uh, try to work on Mama a little bit, time for Papa get in there. <laughs> and that's just the way it works. Man's got to hey, do what hey, he's got to hey, do. Shot, 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 shot. Right here. Clean, clean, clean. Yes, sir. Yeah, mm. Oh, boy. Woo. All day long. Woo. Now, Excuse me, Brian. No problem. Jim Beam, your, uh, your uh, drink of choice as well? Jim Beam is the best bourbon whiskey going around here. Yes, sir. Mine. No question. Is this an average Wednesday night for the Briscoe clan? You know what? Pretty close. Pretty close, Brian. You know, and, and people, what you see, what you see the Briscoes, it's life. I mean, it ain't no put on. It ain't no show. It's life. And the Briscoes are bigger than just Jay and Mark. It's family. And, I mean, that's just how we live. Now, was that the first scuffle that uh, Mama Briscoe got into? The first and maybe the last? Or, or has this been a, a life of uh, random scuffles here and there? <laughs> hey, now listen. Mama Briscoe is as feisty as they come, buddy. Mama Briscoe is... And there's just a couple things that set Mama Briscoe off. And the number one thing that set Mama Briscoe off is when you mess with Mama Briscoe's siblings. Mama Briscoe will whoop an ass in a heartbeat. Oh, her youngest. Oh, her youngest. Not her siblings. Excuse me. The Briscoe that <laughs> Mark well, for sure. me. Her youngest. <laughs> we, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> when you mess with Mama Briscoe's youngins. Shit, you asking, uh, you might as well mess with the devil himself. Now, now, speaking of siblings, do you have siblings as well, Papa Briscoe? Yes, I do. I've got two brothers and I've got three sisters. Oh my God, that's a big family. Big family. We did stone up from the heart of West Virginia coal mining country. So so this was the the first Briscoe clan, was you and your two brothers? This was the first clan, yes, sir. And believe you me, it is absolutely a clan. I mean, they, they still, we still get together in West Virginia. We still stomp out, and we still enjoy, and we still enjoy life. Now, does does clan go back many years in West Virginia? The clan goes back many years, no question. Uh, my father, the boy's granddaddy, and uh, his brothers. And it's just been kind of passed down and passed down and passed down. Well, let's let's talk a little bit about your father because we we should go a little bit further back into the Briscoe family history here. I don't think I don't know if anyone's ever asked these questions here before, but tell us about Granddaddy Briscoe. Yeah, oh man, Granddaddy Briscoe. He played professional football for the Philadelphia Eagles. Really. Uh, yeah, he did. Uh, Steve Van Buren, he played behind Steve Van Buren, who was a Hall of Fame running back. Uh, Granddaddy Briscoe is absolutely um, spitting him. I mean, what you see from the Briscoes, that's Granddaddy Briscoe. Uh, they, they used, he's a football coach. They used to kid him that he had a steel plate in his head. I mean, he would headbutt you in a heartbeat. I remember when I was just a, a freshman in high school, and I was we were out practicing one day, and he came up and grabbed me by the face mask, and I had my helmet on, and he slammed, headbutted me with his helmet on, and I thought, holy shit, I can't even hardly see. Now, I don't know how that affected him, but I can't even hardly see. But he was... Uh, 
he he was a man's man to say the least. Now, are you excited about the uh, the potential of uh, little grandchildren Briscoes running around here? Hey, Brian, listen, you know what? Here's the thing. I got one now. Jay's got a son, and we call him the big boy. Hey, Brian, he's cursed. He is cursed. He is spit out of all of our mouths. Big boy Gannon, Jay's got one. He's got a daughter that is due any day, oh, and man. Mark's got one coming in the spring. So, man, it doesn't get no better. Oh, man. Gannon is the youngster's name? Gannon. Gannon Cole is Jay's is Jay's son. After Rich Gannon, the Raiders quarterback, obviously. That sounds like a guy that's going to be an ass kicker. <laughs> Man, I tell you, he's a tough little dude, buddy. He's a tough little dude. Now, when did Ring of Honor uh, uh, talk to you about the possibility of, of getting involved? And were there any were there any second thoughts, or was it kind of like as as soon as there was trouble coming for your boys, there was no question you were going to get involved? Brian. We were on the way to the beach one night. Jay and Mark and I were on the way to the beach. We were going down to a Little Feet concert down in Dewey Beach. And Jay said, oh, shit, I just, Ring of Honor just says, says they they want you to get involved. We got this thing going on with the Kings of Wrestling. They want you to get involved. No question. No question. <laughs> no question. Now, you seem to be in pretty good shape. I'm not saying you're an old man or anything, but you are their father. Still in pretty damn great shape here, and there's a video of you uh, bench pressing, uh, probably, presumably in the garage with the, the young fellas. And, and what kind of training regimen do you do? Oh, you know, I tell you, it's, it's, uh, and, and, uh, it, it's been something that, that I have done forever. I have always worked out and lifted weights, as, and, and, and it's just kind of passed from me to the boys. Um, but I generally, before I go to work in the morning, I generally am five o'clock in the morning. I'm, I'm, I'm working out and probably five out of seven mornings a week. Now has, has Shane Hagedorn in his entire life ever worked out as hard as you work out on any given day? You know, man, the whole thing, it, it makes no, no, but it makes no difference. Because that little bastard's going to find out what it's all about. What the, he's going to find out what it is all about Saturday night. I, you know, I hope he shows up. I hope he shows up. Now, Shane Hagedorn, you mentioned in your your uh, interview on on the television show the other day that uh, you know your boys had, had been delivered a beating here and there when they were growing up, and you made some men out of them. And there was nobody in Shane Hagedorn's life that had ever made a man out of him, and now it was your job to do so. Do you kind of, in a way, sort of feel sorry for this fella, what he's getting into here? No, 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 no. Shane Hagedorn, hell no, I don't feel sorry for his ass. Shit, no. Hey, you know what now? I mean, the boys, the boys, I mean, I've been bouncing the boys around and carry, but shit, he got grabbed himself by his balls and step up and be a man now. I mean, shit, there ain't ain't no excuses for for being a damn little pecker-headed wimp wimp like he is. Now, I don't want to look past Shane Hagedorn, and I'll I'll give you a chance to, to say some final words to him here in a moment, but... When this this match is over on Sunday and you've you've delivered a, a sound beating to these these three men here, is there anybody else in in Ring of Honor that you've been watching on TV where you're kind of like you know this little fella here he could really use a, a roughing up? Ah, uh, you know that I mean that you know Brian, I, I, I I'm just focused on Shane Hagedorn. You need to understand, son, that you don't step in our business. You don't step in family business. And I, that's where my focus is. I've looked no farther than that. Now, I have any uh, before we wrap it up. You have any any uh, any final words for Mister Hagedorn here? Anything? Uh, obviously, you don't want to give away your strategy, or, or perhaps you do. Perhaps you're just going to tell him you're going to punch him right in the face. But uh, any final words for him before we wrap this up? <laughs> hey, Shane Hagedorn. Boy, you in for the ass whooping in your life come Saturday night. I'm telling you, you in for the ass whooping in your life. Kings of Wrestling, Hero, Claudio, boy, you ain't seen this shit. You ain't seen shit like what. New York City will never be the same. Brian, hold on just a minute. Got one more thing I want to say before we go. All right. Hey, 
Hey, you damn right. New York City ain't never going to be the same this Saturday night. It's more than just a wrestling match. It's, it's, two, it's, it's like two lifestyles clashing. Exactly. I mean, hey. You got the Briscoes. You got the Briscoes to get up six o'clock every morning, drink some coffee, and go to work. Yeah, right, then, right. Hey, then you got the Kings of Wrestling to get up at probably noon and sit there and pick their balls. Yes, sir. Now come on now, shit. We some grown ass men now here. We gonna show these boys Saturday night, New York City. It's on, baby. Never be the same, baby. Never be the same. Who you with? It is on. It is Ring of Honor Final Battle 2010 coming up Saturday night in New York City. If you can be there, you better be there. And if not, go fight live.tv, internet pay-per-view. And uh, Jay, Mark, and Papa Briscoe, I want to thank you guys very much for doing the show today. It was awesome. Yes, sir. Thanks for having us. All right. Thank you very much. And, of course, thanks, everybody, for listening. We shall talk to you again after a while.